Good morning and welcome to Empowering Morning Conversations. Today it is 577th session. So thank you all for being always there. Uh, it's been a long journey and it's been a very, very interesting and fruitful uh, journey being together in EMC and um, learning a lot. So, so with that, uh, let's get started today's session. Um, as you all know, uh, Sudhapak Sar is uh, traveling uh, Northeast India. Uh, he's been posting good pictures and videos, very interesting. So today uh, I'll handle the session. So we have been uh, listening to um, Sudhapak Sar almost um, five, six, seven uh, sessions he has taken on conflict management strategies, right? So what are the different strategies? There are five different strategies, strategies he talked about. Um, the turtle strategy, which is avoiding, which is basically lose, and the other person may win or lose. And um, a bear strategy, which is uh, basically accommodating. Um, basically, you lose, but uh, you make sure that others are comfortable and others win. So lose, win. And then fox strategy, which is compromising. So whether you win it or not, uh, make sure that the other person doesn't win. So uh, it is invariably goes into lose and lose. And then uh, the short strategy, which is uh, basically at any cost win. So others will invariably lose. So win, lose strategy. And the fifth one, which is most important, and that is what we all want to be, is the owl strategy where it is win-win. It is collaborating and win-win. So these are the five possible strategies. People by default follow something or other, but every one of us can aim towards going to all strategy of win-win-win. So where we don't compromise on our goals and others' goals and also don't compromise on the relationship. And it is always possible to find the best of all the worlds, but it requires that kind of clarity, understanding, work, and it is it will be fulfilling to do that. Okay, so this is what we have been seeing last uh, uh, one week or so. So today, uh, so this is something, the conflict strategy is uh, used everywhere in life, not only in your um, work, you also do it in your personal life. So that's very interesting. The conflict strategy is very much studied and being um, uh, researched and uh, practiced in the organizational environment, which can be applied very much in personal life as well. So similarly, the one of the topics uh, we can explore today is stakeholder management. So this is very much applicable at your uh, professional working environment as well as your personal life, right? So that's the topic of today, stakeholder management. So what is, who's a stakeholder? Everyone. <laughs> yes, at one level, everyone, yeah. Yeah, that's a very broad statement, but to be specific to your environment, your particular goal, particular uh, thing, um, how do you define who is the stakeholder? First, yourself. Yes, very much. Yes, so who are the other stakeholders? So whom do you consider as stakeholder? One who is involved in our goal, like for example, um, parents would be one stakeholders. Right. Who's Society involved? would be one. Yes, who is involved. Some people may not be involved, but still they may be stakeholders because anybody who can have any influence or say in it can be a stakeholder. Right, you are right, um, Priya, very much. So who is a stakeholder? Anybody who has influence over what you are working on is a potential stakeholder. So why do you need to manage the stakeholders? So 
So why do you need to manage the stakeholders? Maybe we can see what all risk will be there if we don't include all the stakeholders. What all are the possibilities? What all need things we need to do to reach our goals? Yes. To achieve the goals of your own or others or combined, you need to manage the stakeholders. Otherwise, it is going to be a a um, very arduous journey, very difficult. If you don't manage the stakeholders, each one may go into their own way. Uh, you may not easily achieve your goals. So to achieve your goals in a relatively simpler way and have a um, enjoying um, journey is uh, possible if you manage the stakeholders. Yes, sir. Yes, Redigan. Uh, can you elaborate about management, sir? Okay, management. So management is, see, one is just letting things happen as it is, right? So by so that means what? It is default. So by default, things will go in a um, low energy mode where things can happen on its own with least amount of effort. So when you put least amount of effort, you may not get what you really want. So if anything creative, anything important, anything uh, worthwhile, needs some kind of uh, energy and effort and order to put in. Otherwise, by default, the entropy keeps increasing. So if you want to create more order, you have to reduce the entropy. If you need to re reduce the entropy, you need to put more, more effort. So if you don't do anything, it will go into default mode. If you want to come out of default mode, if you want to achieve something better, something creative, then you have to do some effort. You have to organize and make an order. So that is the management. The management of anything is basically coming out of the default mode and moving towards the uh, creativity, towards the order, towards the betterment. So that's the management. That requires management effort. Otherwise, it will not happen just like that. So does it give some uh, pointers? On a lighter note, I, I want to know what is entropy. <laughs> OK. <laughs> so by default, um, what happens is things will go into the lowest possible uh, state. Uh, so basically, there is no order. More and more chaos, more and more um, uh, issues and problems that is the entropy increasing of entropy so if you increase the order then it is less entropy waste of energy is entropy right so management management is required to make the things uh, in order to improve to move towards creative mode if you don't manage, it will go into default mode and it will go into the negative spiral. So that, that's what I broadly uh, understand, Riddhi Garu. So if you have anything else to add to that, please do. No, I understood now, sir. Now, what I thought was initially, you, you always say that you manage, the, you manage people. That is a different meaning. That's why I asked this question. Yeah, so it can be looked at as a manipulation. So yes. when we say management, right. it is we are not talking about manipulation. Yeah, that's no. not exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I understand. No, when we are talking management, we are not saying you manipulate. We are saying do it in proper way, which helps you, will help others, and the whole journey of achieving your goal is much more smoother and better. And it is a win-win, not win-lose. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah. OK, so uh, why do you need to manage? So we broadly said that to achieve the goal, to uh, make the uh, journey itself is much more smoother, you have to manage the stakeholders. So one of the key aspects of managing the stakeholders is the communication, of course, right? So how do you go about um, 
managing the stakeholders what are the steps involved what is the what is the first one what is the step what is the first step first step in stakeholder management listening even before that open to there has to be somebody to manage right yeah so identification of stakeholders is the first step because many a times we don't even know um, who are all the stakeholders in fact identifying the stakeholders is very 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 key aspect of the whole thing and it is the first step so whether it is your um, uh, professional enrollment or personal enrollment identifying the stakeholders is the first one first step so how do you identify and uh, can you give some examples from your own life uh, either from your personal life or from your um, career what are the typical stakeholders and how do you identify that for any thing which i have to implement in my company yeah uh, i need to involve uh all the people otherwise if i just think that i can implement right uh, i cannot so first is i have to identify the stakeholders yeah that's very important correct so how do you identify so look at what is this project or what is this yeah. goal uh, you want to achieve and see who are all will be who all will be the influencers contributors uh, who will get impacted um you no know, remotely even remotely um then list out so that the or the importance will be different some people will be directly involved and they are the major contributors and some people will not be contributors in fact in fact they can be detrimental if you don't manage them they will create problem for you even yeah. though they don't have anything to do with that goal yeah. if you don't manage them they will put blocks into that right yeah. so typical example is the government right yeah even though government may not be directly uh, getting impacted but they can put block if you don't manage them right in your uh, projects so uh, so so what is a typical uh, similar issue in um, government equivalent not exactly government equivalent but something very very important um, stakeholder in um, our day to day life our, our life if you want to achieve any goal in our life itself one of the key stakeholders who can create problem uh, if you don't manage your spouse no that is given that is the absolutely without the spouse you the key contributor right you can <laughs> if you are saying whether your spouse is a key contributor or not you have a big problem beyond that but it is related to spouse so today it is dialogue between you and me only let it go let's continue <laughs> okay it's basically spouse's mother the mother in law right if you don't identify the mother in law as the key stakeholder and manage you will invariably get into trouble whatever the life project you have does it ring bells i don't agree with that okay so what's your perspective in the broad way i can say the family members yes definitely family members but why i am bringing this mother in law stuff is that that is like you know uh, one thing which we invariably uh, miss out but it has a deeper impact why because whether you are a female or male in your young you know your life because the mother is the one who takes care of you right so the influence of mother on anybody is too deep right even after you grow right and have your own family still the influence of mother is very very deep 
okay if you don't recognize that and manage and see your own mother you you will know how to manage to the extent possible but your spouse's mother has deep impact on your spouse and in in turn on any goal you work with your spouse so this is one thing we invariably miss out that is why i am bringing that out well i never had any problem uh, with my mother and that's why it didn't occur to me okay no need not be problem even positive way they can really contribute to the project in a very very positive way so you should make use of that i am not saying when i say manage that doesn't mean that you have to manage only the negative things you should manage positive also let's say there is some uh, stakeholder uh, whose presence is going to really contribute a lot to the project you should manage them you should uh, you know communicate with them you should uh, get the best possible thing from them as well yeah so taki we have been talking about stakeholder management uh, both in the professional environment as well as personal uh, life so the first step what is the first step is what we are discussing which is identifying the stakeholders yeah this is a nice point you said about the mother in law i was also thinking in another perspective that the great impact on our kids yes because they are their grandparents absolutely uh, one thing i want to add is uh, now my father in law and mother in law is here in uae just to, uh, came for visit so their love is you know they will not get uh, this is one of the best gift we can give to them i felt and my parents just lost uh, recently so they are the remaining so i felt this is very important we have to provide them that uh, love uh, to our kids so that also important the influence of them on our spouse also impacting us we are we are be you know thinking why they are like this because maybe there is something indirectly affecting through this uh, their uh, you know parents means our spouse parents so that is a nice point i feel this all are stakeholders in our life yeah nice yeah and uh, and invariably we underestimate or miss out so that's what i uh, brought it out but and it is natural that the the mother in law has deeper impact on uh, any project you undertake in your life yes yes it is very very important one and they are the one guiding even controlling us indirectly we don't know what's yeah. going on so yeah. that should be you know in account right so uh, typically the uh, in career unless you are a uh no owner founder of the uh, company when you are in the middle management and other uh, positions your projects are relatively uh, shorter time frame right it could be in terms of months years not more than a decade or so right even however the big project you are in right so there managing the stakeholder is very key point, important thing but you look at the projects in your life right getting married or um, having kids and raising them up so each of them are like projects spreading across multiple decades 20 years 30 years 40 years right so the goals you want to achieve the projects you undertake in your personal life are much more longer much more deeper much more important it has long lasting impact on your life and others life so there identifying the right st- stakeholders is very and managing them is very 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 important because if it is a you no know, some office project which spreads across 3 months 4 months 5 months or even one year one and a half years it's okay it is done and then you move on to the next project whereas in life it is not so you have to really identify all the key stakeholders and manage them for long term okay so the first step is identifying the stakeholders what is the second step seeing the impact that they have in our goals like absolutely. how much impact they have yes absolutely identifying the influence and um, what influence they have what um, 
uh, stake they have in the project you're undertaking, the goal you're undertaking. You're absolutely right, uh, Priya. Yeah, like um, if they are the primary stakeholders or the secondary yes. or the tertiary, or depending yes. upon their... Exactly, yeah. And then accordingly, you have to you know, plan the whole thing on how to manage them. So who are the other stakeholders? Um, beyond people, can there be other stakeholders? But ultimately, everything boils down to people. But there could be some organizations, entities, there also can be stakeholders. So first thing is identifying the stakeholders whether it is people or organizations or anything else, and then understanding their expectations. And the second step is analyzing the level of influence of each stakeholder, levels of their interest, what is the kind of influence they can have, what is the power they have, what kind of engagement they will have, what kind of communication um, uh, required for, uh, no, for them. So these are the two key aspects. So, so can you, uh, identify, let's say, in your uh, personal life, who are the key stakeholders and um, uh, what is the kind of influence they have? Any examples? If I talk about my career choices, yeah. So primary stakeholders is always me, my parents, mm -hmm. and secondary is my siblings. They don't have that much impact on it, but yeah, they if whatever choices I make, they are also impacted by it. Correct. And then there are my cousins because they are also involved. So it's a when I make a decision, they are involved in it. Right, and who else can influence? Who are the other stakeholders? And the what was can influence the career choices or you know making career choices is here helpful. I guess the, the organizations in which I'll be applying or no. Yes, and it could the be selection your selection process. It could be your mentors. Yeah, yeah. yeah that too. okay. Right, so yeah, here you can also classify who are the primary stakeholders and who are the secondary stakeholders. And then accordingly you have a structure on how to manage them, how to communicate with them. Okay, so what is the uh, third step? First one is identifying the stakeholders. Second one is identifying what kind of influence or power or impact they can have in the um, project or the goal you have. So what could be the third step? Okay, it may not be obvious. One of the things, it need not be necessarily third step, one of the steps is Identifying the triggers, identifying their perceptions. So the stakeholders, perceptions and triggers. So what triggers them positively or negatively, right? That you need to understand. So you want to uh, go for a particular career, whereas your uh, key uh, stakeholders may not like it. They may have negative perception about it or negative experience about it they will say, no, no, don't go for it, right? Whereas you know that it is important for you. So you need to understand their perceptions and their triggers. They may come from their own perception, their own experiences, which uh, may not be relevant for your goal, but they can really <clears throat> influence you, right? So somebody may say that uh, no, uh, teaching is not a great job. Don't go for it. That is their perception. But that doesn't mean that you ought to just, you know, listen to them or just ignore them. So you have to manage them. So you need to understand why they are saying it and how do we, how do you uh, manage them? How do you explain to them that 
while that is your experience, I think this is important for me to get into this. So identifying the triggers, list of potential known triggers for each influence for each stakeholder. You estimate the impact of the reactions. So when the trigger happens to the stakeholders, what kind of impact it can have. And then accordingly target a communication or mitigation of the problem. And also identifying the alternate solution if it is really going to be uh, an issue, the current way it is going. And then leveraging stakeholders' perception. Some people may have great perception and on, your, on your goal, and they may want to help you a lot. So they may have different views and ideologies or same view. If they have different views, you can learn from that and then uh, implement that. If it is same view, they can support you a lot. So look for opportunities that may arise based on their perception. Build your relationship based on trust, transparency, and mutual benefits to all stakeholders. And there should be honest engagement and trust building behaviors with stakeholders. So the third step is to identify the triggers and identifying the perceptions and leveraging them. So that's the third step. Yes, Shakti, you have something to say. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, most of the time uh, with the stakeholders, the problem is the common goal is very clear, what we want to achieve it. But what problem we are fa facing right now, it's, for example, if we are having a common goal and then the time, by what time we need to achieve this, most of the time issues are coming in that. We are telling that, okay, uh, within two business days, we can achieve it, but they won't expect that, okay, no, no, within, within one business day, you need to complete this. That is the major uh, issues or conflict that we are facing. How to handle that? Right. So, uh, so the first point you said that goals are clear, even that is not necessarily true. Many a times the goal itself may not be clear to the stakeholders. So it is important to clarify that this is what is the goal and this is a common goal, which all of us want to work together, right? So clarifying the goals, itself is very uh, important. It has to be reinforced continuously. Yes, right? yes, we are doing that. Right. So then the uh, once everybody understands the goal um, and the benefit of achieving that goal, then you need to um, understand their influence and then take their inputs accordingly. So work together as a team, right? See, just because somebody expects something that that goal to be achieved within shorter time frame or some deliverable to be uh, given in shorter time frame than what you expect, that doesn't mean that you, it is, un, what is it? Um, it is not the right expectation, right? Yeah, true. Um, because uh, in, in my case, okay, if some production incident, some, something is happening, Okay, right. immediately that business analyst whoever is approaching my teammate, okay, this is the topmost priority work you have to work on. Right. Okay, but we do have a lot of commitments. Okay, so that not need, uh, not to be the case of topmost priority for us right now. Because some workarounds are there, okay, they can manage somehow. But that's how the conflicts are uh, coming. Yeah, so that's where you have to apply the conflict uh, strategy. So one thing is when, when the stakeholder is expecting certain things which doesn't seem to be possible, one thing you can always ask is, what can they contribute to make it happen? You can always come out with and say that, yes, right now, given this situation and the resources, this is the timeline possible, or this is what is the goal, this is what, what we can deliver, right? If you want different kind of expectations, different deliveries, different timelines, then, these are all the additional uh, resources, additional uh, uh, things required. So they will listen. If they can provide well and good. Otherwise you can say, so basically give them the alternative. Don't, when, when the stakeholder expects certain things, there is no point in saying yes or no. You should always present 
multiple options right so you can say at least three options if not six seven mm -hmm. right if you present multiple options and say this is what is the requirement if you want this then they will see that is how you make them part of the whole journey right more and more you present that they will understand then the credibility and trust starts then over a period they will say they will listen to you they will say okay when uh, shakti says that this is what it is i think she would have analyzed all the perspectives and it must be true okay yeah. so that that trust will come only when you truly are interested and uh, put effort to analyze and look at different perspectives and choose what is more appropriate for the situation okay got it sir thanks yeah. okay so what are the other steps involved in uh, managing the stakeholders so first one we said identifying the stakeholders second one is um, uh, identifying their influence or impact and third one is identifying the triggers and their perceptions and managing them so what is the other one what are the other uh, steps involved in stakeholder management key aspect which which i think critical raised at the beginning itself continuous communication so at all times you have to really keep the stakeholders updated bring them into discussions right so that is the out of all the things this is one of the key things without this it is very difficult to succeed so you should have some kind of communication plan to uh, keep the stakeholders in loop keep them updated and get their perspectives their inputs so that's that's very very important thing so th this is true for our in, you know the personal projects more we, in personal projects what we do is we take it for granted we assume that they will know or they will understand at least the office projects we do uh, communicate formally whereas the personal projects which are very very important for our life which has a lot of um, impact for all of us we really miss this communication part of it so coming out with a good communication strategy is very important to manage the stakeholders so determine the preferred method of communication some people may like in a particular way somebody else will like it in a different way so you should fine tune your communication mechanism for each stakeholder particularly the primary stakeholders and others also stakeholders are different and therefore their preferred communication means can never be the same so you have to fine tune facilitating stakeholder communications recurrently is essential continuously and recurrently update stakeholders regularly and not assume that a yeah, quiet one is a happy one if some stakeholder is very quiet that doesn't mean that that person is happy and that person is going to really contribute i think that is you have to communicate more with them as well create an expectation for the stakeholders on how the communication will be and how they can always expect and receive the updates so set the expectations to the stakeholders on what they can expect right so these are some of the key steps so we looked at uh, four steps so any um, any uh, thoughts any inputs any ideas i think overall communication is the key sir that's right yeah So anybody else would like to? Yeah, yes, Shakti. Yes, sir. Overall, the communication is the key, but right. most of the time when we are going and communicating with them, some conflict is happening. Then we are giving up. Then we are not trying the alternative yeah. ways to communicate. Yeah, exactly. The initial yeah. uh, volunteering things is there. After that, if something is going wrong, then we are giving up. We are not uh, looking for possibilities. Yes. So that's where where this conflict are like you know we looked at. 80% of your life there will be some conflict or other because when you are dealing with 
others there will be different points of view different expectations so you should know how to manage the conflict situations you cannot give it up right so yeah in fact you should manage yourself also you are the key stakeholder like uh, verity girl said at the beginning so it is possible that you yourself will go against the goals and you yourself may give up right so then you have to motivate yourself you have to communicate to yourself as well okay any other any other thoughts so today it is uh, very silent from many people particularly shanti ma'am are you okay anybody else would like to say anything yes thank you yeah uh... It is about stakeholders in our all life. I mean, so just yeah, a... yeah, stakeholder for anything. See, whatever you want to achieve in life or in uh, professional environment, you need to identify the stakeholders relevant to all those things. So, in your life also, let's say you want to, um, uh, no, uh, make your uh, kid uh, educated in the college, right, in a particular way. So then you have to identify the stakeholders, stakeholders for that also, right? Or you want to become a particular uh, uh, kind of person, then you have to identify the stakeholders who can help achieving that. Yeah, this is a big task. I also experience means, you know, if you do some, uh, uh, you keep some goal or something, especially if you want to go for a dieting or uh, you have to give a good physique. There will yeah. be a lot of uh, comments from surrounding, especially the peer pressure yes. uh, will be very difficult. That's the one we are losing the momentum when yeah. we are not considering all those because yeah. they, they have angle a different perspective. So how yeah. we can, you know, uh, them to enroll that our perspective or uh, we when sometimes we have to be fight alone. So that is going yeah. to be difficult. How to fight yeah. so, alone? But if you may, if you identify and manage them then there is a good possibility of you know not having so much of strain and so much of uh, issues yes, and also and one of the other key thing in identifying the stakeholders is also to identify somebody who uh, who is going to really uh, help you who is going to encourage you in your uh, endeavor right they may not be immediately obvious but you can identify somebody who can really help you, who can encourage you as well and make them as part of your stakeholders. Yeah, the thing is, uh, the, if, if they are, their perspective, which is only the selfish, the benefit of us, then there will be less enrollment. So <clears throat> you have to enroll them also, it is for a whole benefit, not only if it is affecting me, uh, then how it can influence others or our you know, family. So Absolutely. that one you have to communicate properly. Then That's only right. it will be easy. Otherwise, you have to be in the different space and do all the things alone. So. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So when you are achieving some goal, it has to help others also. It cannot be just we are only selfish stuff. Yeah. Yes, uh, Shanti, ma'am. Uh, good morning, sir. Good morning, good morning. everyone. Morning. I'm not feeling well. That's why. Oh, okay. I'm very sorry. Oh, please take care. So. Thank you. Okay, so I think we can stop here. There are some more steps also, but I think we will stop here. Uh, so, anybody would like to say any shares or anything, anything else you want to add? So, Venkateshji, maybe you can say some shares today. I want to say a Thirukural. Yes, something. Even Yidu Sayum Yena in the Avan Adi Kail Vidal. Yeah. So, this is the this may be yeah. the appropriate tirkural for this day. Yeah, absolutely. Identify, analyze, and identify who can do what, and then assign appropriately the task to that particular person who's capable, who's good at. Is that right, uh, Shantima? Sir. Okay, thank you.
Anybody else? Yes, so uh, Redigaru, your final words, and then we'll close it. Thank you, sir, uh, for the nice and brief, very brief session on uh, stakeholder management. Uh, I'm still trying to understand and how to proceed with this, both in my family and uh, my corporate. Let me take the first step today. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for um, being here in EMC, every one of you. So let's again meet tomorrow, 7 a.m. India time. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Sir. Great session, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you.